to study with Sudhir. In this video, we are going to be looking at the poem, which is part of the ISC syllabus for English literature. We are the music makers. Now, this may seem like a short poem to you, but let me tell you, it's not at all simple. It's a rather complicated and complex poem, like many of the poems as part of your English literature syllabus. Now, what exactly is this poem we are the music makers all about right okay let's understand a bit of the background jisse ki aapko asani hogi poem ko samajhne mein it's written by arthur william edgar o shaughnessy okay um, he's a he was a british poet of irish descent that is from ireland he worked interestingly as a herpetologist which means working with reptiles and amphibians at the museum in london at the british museum in london but literature interested him much more and he published three collections of poems between 1870 and 1874 so pretty prolific right music and moonlight in 1874 is the most noted is the most popular and famous of his poems because it contains this poem we are the music makers it's also known as an ode ode uh, which is essentially a lyrical poem written as an address to a particular subject. Okay, he died in 1881. Now, let's understand uh, a bit about the poem. This poem was actually initially written uh, as nine stanzas, but the abridged version, which is for you, is of three stanzas. So consider yourself lucky because nine stanzas would have been quite heavy-duty stuff, right? Now, uh, it is also known as the Ode, but it is more popularly known by the first line of the poem, which is, we are the music makers. Okay. Uh, it is the first poem of the collection of the poems, Music and Moonlight. And this is a poem which is dedicated to poets, to artists, to writers, to musicians, anyone who has a creative bone in him or her. Okay. So it calls them, the poem calls the music makers, dreamers of dreams, movers and shakers. And all these are very poetic and extremely lyrical kind of phrases. Okay. Uh, in fact, the phrase movers and shakers is believed to have originated from this poem. Movers and shakers karke ek TV program bhi aata tha ek time pe. With Shaker Suman, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this poem describes the life of an artist, of an artist or life of artist the beauty of their artwork and the impact that they create on the world, the impact that they leave on the world. This is very important. Please make a note of this. Okay, now uh, the poem also celebrates the energy and the spirit of the Victorian era. And it's a poem about English nationhood. And it's considered one of the most positive, one of the most hopeful and very uplifting poems about the beauty of art, about why artists are so important in the overall scheme of things. Okay, now let's go through it stanza by stanza. This is the first stanza. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams, wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. I have marked some words in blue and red because I want to highlight them. Now, when the poet speaks about music makers, he's talking about artists from all over the world. Okay. In that sense, it is an all-encompassing definition. When he says music makers, he means artists of all kinds. Musicians, sculptors, poets, writers, everyone, right? And therefore, it has some kind of a world, some kind of a global appeal to it. He calls them dreamers of dreams. Sapno ka saudagar Hindi mein bolte. I don't know whether that would be an apt uh, translation into Hindi. Uh, basically, he means when you say dreamers of dreams, basically people who are able to aspire for big things in life, think big and think creatively in a very creative kind of manner that you are able to create something out of nothing, right? In the third and the fourth line, two words strike, stand out, lone and desolate. Both convey, interestingly, the same thing, the sense of being alone, the sense of 
loneliness, right? Uh, they give you the feel when you see, when you talk about being lonely, being alone, lonely and alone are actually not exactly the same thing. But anyway, they refer to some kind of, a, you know, inward looking, some kind of soul searching. Ki you are able to have some thoughts and you think about yourself and your life whenever you are alone. Don't you do that, right? So it is as if they are suffering from some kind of a pain in their hearts, in their mind. And it is these sadness, these moments of sadness, these moments of loneliness that actually play an important role in shaping their creativity. Understood? That because of the time they are able to stay alone, think, and that is what has an impact on the kind of creative output they have later on. Okay. Now, the poet then expands on the loneliness factor, lone sea breakers and desolate streams. He seems to suggest that they have become losers, world losers and world forsakers. Forsakers means jisne chhod diya, forsake, I forsake uh, this, right? So that they become world losers and world forsakers as a result of the difficulties that they go through as part of their creative process. Because people may think creativity, making a painting, making a sculpture is very easy. It's not because you have to think about every minute detail, every nuance in that particular work, be it a poem or be it a painting or a portrait. So the pale moon, of whom the pale moon gleams, the pale moon is a pointer to the meager income. Meager means very less income that they generate through art uh, and it makes it very difficult for them to survive. Okay, for, the, for whom? On whom? Whom means the artist, the pale moon gleams, that the moon doesn't have enough light to fall on it because of the very less and reduced returns that they get as a result of their work of creativity, whatever it may be. The loneliness that is spoken about in this first stanza is also an indication, is also a pointer to the solitude and the quiet that the artist needs to make his work of art. Bheed bhaar ke ilake mein artist cannot focus and make a great piece of art, right? So he needs the loneliness. He needs that alone me time in order to be able to create that kind of an excellent work of art. Okay, so um, that's one point. The other point, the other point that this loneliness is indicating is that when the time to move and shake the world comes, we are the movers and shakers. When the time comes to move and shake the world, it is an individual artist who rejects the existing order. The individual artist, he rejects ki abhi tak jo hai, usko mein reject karta hu, and he creates a new order. So, what is he trying to say is that the artist is a creator. He creates something new by rejecting the old. Okay, so the loneliness in that sense is an individual's challenge to the status quo. Status quo means abhi jo hai, usko ye loneliness, ye akela pan ek se challenge karta hai aur usko badal deta hai in order to create something new. I know it all sounds very complicated, but the poem is complicated. Mere bandhu, isko asan karna itna asan bhi nahi hai. Okay. What do the lone sea breakers and the desolate streams convey? The poet is describing the soul searching by the artist that he is looking inwards and how they wander alone by the sea breakers and sit by the isolated, the lonely, the desolate. Jahan par koi bhi nahi ho. Streams matlab ek jharna. Okay. Uh, a stream of water for those who don't understand Hindi. What does the pale moon convey? The pale moon conveys lack of adequate light, obviously. And that's a pointer to the poor financial condition of the artist who find it difficult to survive only by creating that art. Therefore, it conveys the meager income that they earn through art, making it difficult to survive. Pale moon also conveys pessimism. The opposite of optimism. It conveys, you know, a sad state. You know, there's nothing great to look forward to. Even though you are creating great works of art that will stay on for many more years and decades and centuries. Pale Moon ka ek aur meaning hai. I hope you're taking down notes. Uh, 
the ancient idea was that the moon had an adverse effect okay uh, on the mental health of the people you know this is the belief okay uh, in fact interestingly even the words that come how do you describe a mad person or a crazy person lunatic lunacy okay is the word which kind of conveys madness that is derived from the latin word luna which stands for lunar which is associated with the moon as you know right so when the poet says pale moon he is also pointing to how the artists are perceived by the world as crazy people connection samajh mein aaya connection samajh mein aaya interesting connection mese now despite all these problems the poet says that these artists are the movers and shakers of the world and the movers and shakers the phrase itself gives a sense of dynamism you know you move and shake the world right so uh, it gives you a sense of dynamism like the way a move when you move and shake your body it gives a sense of dynamism to the kind of dance that you are doing right so that if change is to be brought if change is to be brought it needs an artist to lead that change it needs an artist to bring about that change i hope you understood that so the phrase movers and shakers is also to a, a pointed to the fact that artists alone are capable of showing an alternative possibility good <sighs> the poem starts with the word we what is the significance of the word we why didn't he say i am the music maker because the poem starts with the word we it conveys a sense of the collective hum hum music makers hain the poet is asserting the role of the dreamers of dreams you know it's all in plural the point being made is that even though the world perceives looks at artists as lonely sea breakers sitting by desolate streams despite being labeled as world losers and world forsakers they are the real movers and shakers of the world so the word we is very significant in the first sentence and in the second last sentence also in the second sentence of the stanza what are the poetic devices used out here since the focus is on music the poet has used an interesting alliteration as a poetic device mm music makers dd dreamers of dreams so uh, because it enhances the musical effect because even in music you have the same notes being repeated after a time you know in order to give you a sense of rhythm right so similarly he has used alliteration as a poetic device and the lone sea breakers and the desolate streams give you a sense of visual imagery that's a other poetic device which has been used uh is there a particular artist that he's talking about is he talking only about poets is he talking only about singers is he talking only about painters no he is not no specific art form is mentioned by the poet he is talking in a very generic kind of sense because critics believe that this is what helped the poem to get such widespread appeal because he is talking about all kinds of creativity he is talking about all forms of creative work and creative art and art itself has a very fluid definition you write i think it's poetry and it is poetry in motion ki tarah bolte hai na so there is a sense of artistry even in handwriting calligraphy has a sense of artistry right he's the person who does calligraphy is also an artist hai na so in everything in which creativity is involved is a work of art right uh then uh, finally uh, what is what kind of a role do artists have to play in the world uh, it is kind of a rebellion because in order to change the status quo uh, also uh, world losers and world forsakers i have already explained to you uh, yeah okay let's move on to stanza 2 with wonderful deathless ditties we build up the world's great cities and out of a fabulous story we fashion an empire's glory ditty means a short simple song here ditty deathless ditties means a symbol of timeless stories the wonderful and immortal the deathless songs which are created by the soul of artists are capable of building the great cities of the world okay the immortal deathless means deathless means immortal jo ki hamesha rahenge 
जिसका कोई एंड दी एंड नहीं है राइट विच आर क्रिएटेड बाई द सोल ऑफ आर्टिस्ट यू नो इट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द सोल इट्स नॉट जस्ट लाइक यू नो ऐसी कुछ भी लिख दिया राइट right? ये कोई यू नो रैप सॉन्ग का लिरिक्स नहीं है दीज आर लाइक डीप लिरिक्स इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट पोएट्री राइट सो द वंडरफुल एंड द इमोटल सॉन्ग्स विच आर क्रिएटेड बाय द सोल ऑफ आर्टिस्ट आर केपेबल ऑफ बिल्डिंग द ग्रेट सिटीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सिटीज डज नॉट मीन ओनली ब्रिक एंड मोटा सिटीज ही इज टॉकिंग ऑल्सो इन सेंस ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन सेंस ऑफ ग्रेट सिविलाइजेशन ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड एंड ब्रिंगिंग आउट द थॉट्स एंड फीलिंग्स ऑफ द पीपल and uh, out of a fabulous story you can create an empire will fash we fashion an empire's glory right an empire right so uh, the poet means to say that the artist the fantastic mind of the artist can create the poems the stories the paintings the songs that mark the glory of a civilization for example simple thing you go to mumbai you go to elephanta caves right just imagine so many centuries back people had created something like that inside a cave where there would have been so little light right isn't it very fascinating someone did that centuries back which is still now being seen by people in the 21st century that is what i'm giving you an example for you to be able to relate to what i exactly mean or you go to the ajanta and elora caves in maharashtra uh, near aurangabad right so if you are able to see and appreciate oh god years ago people actually created these this kind of marvelous sculptures and structures right so what happens is that even after an empire is vanquished because that may have been commissioned say let's say by a king or some monks may have made it right but even after they are no more even after that kingdom that empire is long gone become part of history books the culture that they have left behind on the walls of elephanta caves of ajanta and elora is still celebrated right so the poet is stating the majesty the grandeur the wonderfulness of what these artists are able to create i hope you are understanding right also the poet says that it is for the creators to create a story and out of a fabulous story we fashion an empire's glory right uh, it is for the creators to create a city or conquer a throne win a throne conquer a throne crown crown matlab throne conquer matlab win one man with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown and three with a new songs measure can trample an empire down in some uh, versions you will find instead of empire kingdom having been written right so um, means the same thing so the poet is saying that it is for the creator to create a city or win a throne uh, or they can destroy a kingdom completely they can create they can also destroy it depends on the creativity of their work ki hum kisko bada chada sakte hain किसको कंप्लीटली डिस्ट्रॉय भी कर सकते हैं सो दिस इज बेसिकली प्लेइंग ऑन द प्रोवर्ब प्रोवर्ब है ना पेन इज माइटियर देन द सोल कलम इज माइटियर देन द तलवार राइट बिकॉज इट से मीन्स टू से दैट आर्टिस्ट ऑल्सो इन द सेम मैनर पोजेस द पावर थ्रू देयर क्रिएशन थ्रू देयर राइटिंग थ्रू देयर पोएट्री थ्रू देयर स्कल्चर थ्रू देयर पेंटिंग्स और एनी फॉर्म ऑफ क्रिएटिविटी और दे कैन ब्रिंग एन एम्पायर डाउन दे कैन डू बोथ they can create they can also completely demolish so with these lines the poet wants to highlight that artists are the reason why society actually moves forward right the lasting effect of poetry that they are uh, their poetry or any form of art continues many decades and centuries later it outlives many societies societies completely go but the work of art still says red fort built by shah jahan continues to this day taj mahal built by shah jahan continues to this day right so that is what is the beauty of these kind of different works which have been created the potential of artistry the famous temples in tamil nadu from the chola dynasty he means to say that artists can influence the minds of people more emphatically more forcefully than anyone else and therefore listen to this carefully art is man's greatest achievement so if you are a creative person 
if you paint or sculpt or write or do whatever, even photography in today's world and day and age, think of yourself as an artist. You have the power of creativity to create something new which can live on long after you are not there. That is the power, okay, of art. Let's come to the final stanza. We in the ages line, we in the ages lying in the buried past of the earth, built Nineveh with our sign and Babel itself in our mirth. Now, this is a little complex, so listen to this carefully. The poet is making a reference to two cities, Babel and Nineveh. Okay, Nineveh at one time was one of the largest cities in the world. And geographically, in a modern-day context, it is in Iraq. Okay, um, it's considered modern-day Mosul. You may have heard the name in Iraq, located on the Tigris River, Tigris or Tigris River. Okay, Babel is also in modern-day Iraq. Now, the poet is making a reference to creations of artists over generations to prove that art is immortal. Ki art kabhi bhi marta nahi hai. The Tower of Babel, listen to this story. Tower of Babel was a tower which people created in order to reach heaven and to go close to God. Okay, so the story goes that when God upar se dekhe, top story se, top floor se, God dekhe, are ye log CD bana rahe hai, tower bana rahe hai in order to reach till me. So obviously, you know, they will also be near me kind of thing. So he saw the determination of people to reach the same level as God by building this tower. So what he did was, they all spoke the same language. What he did was he divided the people by giving them different languages and making it difficult for them to understand each other, right? So even if they were not able to build the physical tower, so as a result of which the tower did not get built completely, but even though they were not able to build the physical tower of Babel, the story that happened, what I've just now told you, is passed on from generation to generation through writings and through art. Similarly, Nineveh was a beautiful city which was destroyed by an earthquake in the buried past of the earth. It was destroyed by an earthquake. It was abandoned in 612 BC. That's what in the buried past of the earth indicates. The artists had built Nineveh with their sign, with their tiredness. There was a sense of exhaustion when they built Nineveh out of distress, okay? And therefore, the city collapsed in the earthquake and does not exist today, Nineveh, the way it was. Babel has an existence because it was built out of joy. You know, people enjoyed building that staircase because they were looking forward to reaching God, reaching the heavens where God would be, right? So Nineveh and Babel are a symbol, symbolic of an um, artist's ability to create or to destroy. Now, let me explain this a little better to you. Why does the poet say Nineveh with our sighing and Babel itself in our mirth? Now, according to critics, sighing probably, okay, was is, is a reference to the torture that the enslaved people received to build the streets, the roads, etc. in the city of Nineveh. Whereas Babel was created with joy with the artists, the sculptors, the artisans, etc. working together in order to reach the heavens. So there was a sense of joy when they were building the Tower of Babel because unko lara tha ki hum upar Whereas Nineveh was created with a lot of sweat and toil of all those people who worked on creating just like a typical city is created, right? So that's probably, that's what critics feel. That's what the meaning of sighing and mirth means out here. So the poet goes beyond the idea of art for art's sake and celebrates the impact of art on society, right? And by Making a reference to these two cities, the poet is lending to art a sense of divinity. He attributes a godly manner to the idea of the artist. You know, artist is almost devta ki tarah hai. Artist is also has a godly kind of um, kind of a um, demeanor, uh, an aura, a personality, and shows through this stanza that the artist ultimately creates and also kills his mythology. And art, according to the poet, is therefore imperishable. Okay. And of each age, there is a dream that is dying. And overthrow them with prophesying. 
to the old of the new world's worth. So art, according to the poet, is imperishable. Art is what is left back in the world, dreams and music. An artist may die, but his art will live on. For every dream that is dying, a new dream is taking birth. Artists, art helps create more artists when creations remain immortal. Because something which is made, let's say, in 1850s, you see it now in the 21st century. You may get inspired to create a different version of the thing. So it is inspiring an artist even after so many decades and years, right? So the larger message, okay, the larger message of the poem is that even though the artists of the world are looked down upon, they are the ones who keep the world alive through their work. Art can never be destroyed even if the artist does. Art is imperishable. And uh, the the line about the prophesying, the artists, the poem says, have raised ancient wonders only to overthrow them with predicting. Prophesying means making a prediction. They have raised ancient wonders only to overthrow them by, by, by predicting. Their work has been the glory of empires, has been the glory of empires, as well as the downfall of the rulers, marking the old of the new world's worth, marking the rise as well as the fall of different civilizations in this world. Okay, I hope I managed to simplify this very complex poem to an extent. Um, you need to read it again, probably listen to the video again, make your own notes so that it will be easy for you to kind of understand. And if you are getting, you will be given the long format questions. You will be able to do justice if you are able to understand the wider theme of the story so that you are able to write all that in your answers as to what are the two, three points that the poet is trying to convey in this particular poem. Thank you very much for watching.